Hey everybody, Michigan here. Today I'm going to go over a couple different things. I'm going to show you the pickups like I normally do, but I also want to do a special little, uh, little section where I'm going to teach you guys how to use game store selling to your advantage. So basically I went into my game store today and I brought third party Genesis controllers, um, an Xbox controller that didn't even have the, the breakaway cord at the end. It was third party also. PS1 games that some of them were just like in a cracked case, some of them didn't even have a case. Uh, most of them were like sports titles. None of them were worth anything. I brought in NES titles that were worth nothing like Yoshi's Cookie and um, just other NES titles worth, you know, little to nothing. Genesis sports titles like cart only. I got a dollar store credit for each. They were going to give me 50 cents or a dollar store credit, so take the store credit. If I'm assuming you know how to uh, judge the value of games. I mean, you, you have some experience with this if you're watching my channel. And if you go into a store, a game store, and you have store credit, you can just use that store credit, let's say, by, by taking in you know 50 of your crappy games. You get $50 store credit for that. Go and buy something that's like 40 or $50 from that retro store that you know is either worth more or worth that $50 and then sell that instead. Basically what you did is you just cleared out a ton of your inventory, crap, that you probably, to get a dollar for on eBay, you know, I don't know, sell it for five bucks, ship it for two, uh, the packaging supplies, the cost to do it all, whatever you paid for, it, whatever your gas was that you paid for when you got it, I mean, all this stuff adds up. Is it really worth your time to get a dollar on eBay off of something you get a dollar trading into your game store for, for in-store credit? I don't think so. So take 50 of your crappy games, controllers, whatever, stuff like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be 50, but my point is you go in with 20 crappy games, you come out with $20 in-store credit, you have knowledge, you go in there and for me, I know I can find a bunch of stuff that will cost me $20, $20 in-store credit that will end up you know, probably selling for $30 or $40. You just turned a bunch of crappy um, space wasting in your, in your house uh, or in your room um, games and, and you, just got, you just got 40 bucks basically for it and you did it all with ease. And now it's up to that game store to sell all those crappy titles but you know they probably will and they're probably really happy just to get a large inventory for cheap. I came in with a huge bag and they were, they were just happy to see it. They didn't even question the fact that you know all the games are crappy but whatever I don't think that they mind it. I mean of course if it's like a hardcore video game store where the owners know exactly what's going on uh, it might be tough but to me for me it's an electronics resale shop so they're not necessarily a hundred percent focused on games. They don't know the values like I do. I mean I I know game values better than all their employees there combined. Not to brag, but it's what I'm passionate about. It's what I collect for. So obviously I'm going to know this stuff better than them. I find them slipping every day on prices. So basically what I did was, I'll show you here. I traded in those crappy games and stuff I'm talking about for Mario Kart 64. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3 for Wii, complete in box, and Road Rash for PS1, disc only. So, I took a bunch of crappy titles, and I turned them into a $5 game, a $45 complete in box game, and an easy, easy, easy to sell $20 to $25 title for the N64. Uh, so, I basically just got, you know, 60 or 70 bucks back for just a bunch of crap that was laying around that I was just begging myself to get rid of. I paid 35 for this, 79 cents for this, and $15 for this. So not only were they good deals, but even if I had to pay full price for what they're worth online for them, I know I can just put them online and sell them instead of having to put you know 50 individual games online. So that was my tip for you guys. And uh, this kind of segues itself straight into my pickups. As you can see, I got these three from the game store. I got my platinum playing cards from Club Nintendo. Go to clubnintendo.com and register your Nintendo products and redeem the points or the coins to get 
to get uh, different different prizes. And this one is given out for redeeming a certain amount of points every year. These are pretty cool. I'm not going to open them, though. Uh, right now, I don't really want to. Uh, just in case they're worth a ridiculous amount of money or something, which I'd rather just have the money for than playing cards. And if they're worth, you know, 10 bucks or whatever, then I'll open them up. At the same store that I traded in uh, all those games to, I picked up some stuff the day before. I got Aladdin for $2, complete in box for Genesis. I already own this, but this is the best game to give to somebody who's buying a Genesis off of you, or maybe a friend, or whatever. Everybody has memories with this game. This is uh, definitely the top handful of Genesis games ever, in my opinion. It's one of the, uh, it's one of my favorite games of all time. I love, love, love this game. It's a really good game. Go, it's it's aged really well. Like going back and playing it, it's still very playable, extremely playable. It's really good. I highly recommend it if you guys haven't played it. It's probably about a ten dollar complete in box game. Picked up the Hulk for three dollars complete in box. Uh, it's the Hulk. It looked cool. It's complete in box. It's for Genesis, one of the systems I collect for. So it was a no brainer. I also picked up. Dragon Ball Z Sagas for GameCube. It was supposed to be complete in box, and then I went back home and realized they didn't put the disc in it. So I went back there the next day, and they told me that the disc should have been in there, otherwise somebody stole it. So they agreed to give me the case and the manual in case I ever find the disc, and in exchange I grabbed Arctic Thunder for the PS2. I played this game, and I so far am not enjoying it. The controls are really weird. It just doesn't really play right. I'll give it a little more time, but I probably played it for like 15 minutes and I just I couldn't get into it. I like this game in the arcades, but for some reason, yeah, the controls are too touchy. And actually, my favorite pickup of the week, um, kind of off of Craigslist, it was a Craigslist type of listing, I got Mystical Ninja Gomon for N64 card only. It's cost me 5 bucks. This game goes from around 25 to 30 bucks. So I was extremely happy to get this. I already own it complete in box, but for now I'll use it as a, a play copy. Unless uh, somebody wants to buy it or, you know, somebody wants to trade something for it. But for now it's always nice to have a copy of a game that I know I might want to play and not have to open up my box for. As stupid as that sounds, it's nice to not have to damage your boxes every time you want to play a game. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I appreciate it. I appreciate every view, every like, every comment, every new subscriber I have to my page. I'm excited about the future of this channel. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next episode.